So uh, this next item here for appearances is American Planning Association Resiliency and Sustainability Award. Chris, I'm sorry. It was Chris Curtis. A little bit. Yeah, late. appreciate you, your patience. Well, as a town resident, I want to just say how much I appreciate you guys and the hard you. issues that you have to deal with. Appreciate that very much. Not easy. Yeah. So um, just want to report on, on this item. Uh, the town of Deerfield, along with um, regenerative design and conservation work, uh, works, received the 2022 Sustainability and Resiliency Award from the American Planning Association for our um, Healthy Soils um, Initiative and Report. So that was pretty exciting. Yes. Um, I traveled to New Bedford um, last week to accept the award on behalf of the town and um, my organization and was joined by um, Eric Giordano from Regenerative Design. And uh, it was a nice event at the uh, New, New Bedford uh, Whaling Museum. Um, this project, um, as you may know, was funded under MVP or the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Grants. And um, healthy soils are a really important um, and key element um, in sequestering carbon to limit climate change and to reduce the impacts of climate change as well. So Deerfield's been kind of a leader um, statewide in both MVP and in healthy soils. Thanks to your and, help and guidance, I might add. And, and, and all of yours as well. Um, so we've, uh, and we've done this demo project and I, I wanna just maybe take a couple minutes and, and talk about the project itself and just briefly. Um, the, the Healthy Soils Project achieves kind of twin goals. One is to coordinate our efforts locally with the state's um, Healthy Soils Action Plan, um, and that helps us in turn to position the town um, when state funding becomes available for um, additional work and projects. And it also um, mitigates the cost to taxpayers of, of climate change. Some of our biggest threats in Deerfield are flooding and drought, and mm -hmm. um, Protecting healthy soils really helps to mitigate both of those kinds of threats. So the, the report, just to briefly summarize what's, what's in it, um, it's a kind of original and innovative approach that led to the award. Um, regenerative design did some mapping and evaluation of soils townwide. And the, um, the point of this was to identify where the most important soils in town are um, the ones that do this job of, of sequestering carbon and, and providing for um, flood control and so forth. Um, and those areas in town that they ended up mapping and identifying were um, basically wetlands, um, river corridors, upland forests, and farmlands. Those are some of our really important areas in town to try to, to manage and protect. Um, the report also developed some um, kind of cutting edge strategies um, and model bylaws for protecting um, and managing those soils, keeping them intact. Um, thirdly, um, the project engaged students. We had um, over 100 frontier high school students that participated in a um, soil health field day where they went out to um, various sites around the high school, including um, neighboring farm to um, take samples of soils and, and understand better how soils function and, and protect um, our community, essentially. That's hugely important. I just, that's great work. Yeah. It really is to get people in touch with how it all works and uh, how the farms work and how the soil makes all the difference and how yes. wonderful our soil is in this area. We're very lucky. We're the top 5% in the world. It's amazing. Yeah. I mean, people don't really think about that. Right. And, and before Chris explains too much, goes beyond the students, I, I just want to say thank you to the Galinsky farm oh, right. and the Yezwinski farm. Um, it, it was, you know, there's low, this is a low budget, obviously, sure. project. So um, it was lovely. The students, as Chris said, it was over 100 students, went across to the Galinsky farm to be able to do this hands-on soil mm -hmm. um, research. And... You know, in my mind, one of the problems with nowadays, poor kids, you know, they got all kinds of bugs and ticks, mosquitoes, all kinds of stuff. People just don't go outside as much. So we really worry about stewardship of the next generation. And um, 
this, this is an example of where the kids were involved and you just never know sparks because interest. sparks an interest, but they were able to go out of the classroom mm -hmm. and, and go to Galinsky's farm and, and actually participate with the whole Very process. Grateful. Yeah. And, um, you know, so I just want to, again, thank Galinsky so much because they were so wonderful to let that happen. Yeah. And, and regenerative re design, our consultants were so fabulous because they're so encouraging and working with the kids and explaining stuff and, and having follow through with the class and, and setting up the situation for a follow up. Yeah. Once we figure out what the state's doing. Right. Um, I'm, Cause I'm on the task force to implement the healthy soils um, action plan. And, you know, so we're trying to align us as Deerfield, the first town in the state. Um, there are several other towns um, modeling on our plan, but um, we were the first and we are trying to align it with the state plan. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's pretty exciting actually. Great work. Yeah. And so go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt, but I was just no, so it's... exciting. And I, I really wanted to thank the Galinskis because it, it was an opportunity for our kids. So, yeah. so much. That was a huge help. So the kids were really actively engaged in this. They were, you know, digging holes around the high school and so forth. And it was it's great. It was an exciting day for them, I think. Yeah. Um, off the phone. So the other thing that the project did was also did outreach to farmers more broadly. Um, we did a couple of workshops for farmers to help them understand, you know, the importance of this, this mapping and work. And we did some targeted soil sampling on several farms, four or five of them in town. That will help us um, over the long term track the, the health of the soils on those farms. And hopefully there'll be some follow on grants and work that will be able to continue that, that effort. Right. Um, so again, hopefully this is this project's just a first step in a longer term effort town wide to um, protect and maintain our healthy soils. It's great. It's great. Um, one of the things, the reason why healthy soils is so important, I think, for Deerfield is in from the time when I was first on the planning board in the 80s and 90s and, and now on the select board here in the next, you know, the next century, the um, our water table has gone up 18 to 20 inches down here and trying to figure out what, how we can absorb and, 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 and filtrate the water in these intense events and, and try to mitigate that continued impact or that trajectory of our water table is going to be a huge important thing. Uh, you need what what climate change is doing for us is we're having intense rain events, we're having drought periods of drought, and we're having higher heat. And and having healthy soils with root systems that will provide storage, filtrate water, and then release some drought conditions is is really critical. And and I mean one of the things today um, I had was in a webinar yeah, on Homeland Security and how hazardous events and emergency situations, how people's attitudes have changed. And one of the things is how, how does it on the local level, what's happening for us as a community, the government, what costs government, what climate change is costing government, but also your households. It's not just insurance costs. It's you know running those um, pumps in the in your cellar, twenty four seven, trying to you know fight the increased water table. So I, I we have a long ways to go, but this is a first step. And getting a ward is 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 recognizing that mm -hmm. we are trying to do something, and I think that's huge. Wow. And I'd like to say that one of the interesting things that came out of this study working with regenerative was um, the, the the amazing amount of water sequestration wetlands provide and, and also uh, gives us a reminder that wetlands aren't a nuisance, they're a necessary part of the environment. And um, we need to understand that, particularly in Deerfield, because we are, as Carolyn loves to say, at the bottom of the bowl, which means we uh, we have rivers all around us and uh, we're a wet place. And um, it's good protection for farmers. Uh, hopefully the, the state will get behind this and offer financial incentives to farmers to actually let some of the wetlands in their farm fields 
be restored so that their good um, area of the land is protected in big storm events. So it, it, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, that's one of my hopes too, is that the state um, will provide grant monies and we might be able to get some actual projects going in some of the farms in the area um, and, and provide some grants to help farmers with that, that effort. Great. While you're here, I know it's a little off topic, but um, MVP a little bit. Um, I got an email from you about the, and I've been talking with Darius about the front of the elementary school. This is a little bit unanticipated, but um, I just saw you were here, so I wanted to talk about it. Um, we, I just want to understand we're not applying to MVP for that project, correct? But we do, I thank you for that plan. I hunted all over for the final plan. I had all the initial designs, but Chris came across the final plan from them. Mm -hmm. And that was more the radius kind of thing. And uh, we are trying to figure out how do we afford to do something to make it easy for the plow, but still kind of retain some of that water that's coming off the roof. Some of that stuff would, uh, I think we could do it under the MVP grant because you, from a security the, point of view, you want to rip up those bushes. The only issue is timing. Because oh. of the safety, we've oh, had yeah. children falling out of wheelchairs. We've patched what we could. We need to dig that thing up in the spring and get it done before we wind up well, what's in serious you know, I'm not sure that I'm not sure that rushing anything like this, we're talking at a project that's going to affect the community for 20, 25 years. Um, and we wouldn't, we, we we need to get back into the MVP program. I mean, it's a a lot of communities now chasing a small, smallish pot of money, but um, it's it's important for a community like us to to go after every potential mm -hmm. source of revenue possible. So um, I know Kevin's here and he has his ideas about this, but um, you know, I'd. Well, what's uh, the timeline on this? Yeah, the timeline, um, letters of intent are due January 24th. Um, grant applications will be due in March. They'll make awards um, probably in uh, May or June. Oh, well, that was uh, so the good. timing's not so bad in terms of that. But do we do we think? I mean, my my well, and I guess we could run a two track thing. Do we think we could get? I mean, we wouldn't fund it till after. Well, depend. Darius was trying to figure out how he could kind of get this rolling as well with, and then recoup we it through do, MVP. Or... We're going to do the Leary lot and we have an MVP for the Leary lot too. That So we, we have two plans that we need to modify somewhat. So can't we run, can't we ask, end up applying for part of the both plans under this timeline? The green, the green infrastructure components of, of both plans would probably be eligible from my understanding of the right. criteria. Both projects, which we would pay 100% for. So why can't we submit an MVP application to offset a percentage of cost for both projects? Uh, I'm all for that. We just, I just know that, you know, like we've been both, waiting for, we're gonna if go, it works, we're, it's been great. We're, we're moving forward. We're going to do both of those projects. If Chris puts it in for the MVP, for any one of those parts, a percentage coming back, it's a win for us because we're going to do it anyway. And no, the timeline, and the timeline, if, as long as we're doing the project, we're matching it, by moving forward on the project, that's our match. Then the if if the award is made in May or June, that's the timeline when we will be. We would do it anyway, right? Well, I mean, we would probably start we it have to move for the Leary lot. We we need to move forward on that as soon as possible. We have to, and we have the front um, of the school to do as soon as possible. We do, and so the issue is, um, the school is applying for. Um, part of their capital for this year's budget to to do some of that project and i'm not sure how much we talked about putting forward or not if it got the split or whether you know, it was asked for all of it or something like that or whatever so i was just trying to figure out and try to guide darius back on what our point because when we talked originally we were like well let's not bother because of the timing on it we've been waiting for years and we have the safety thing but if it works and fits into the program i we just got denied last time. So it was like, well, but then you said we didn't apply for that. No, we did not. And we we also got denied, if I understand correctly, because we hadn't spent the money that we had in the previous round. And so that was 
going to make us an ineligible for we didn't we didn't apply the last time yeah. for the elementary school well just no to, no just I, to clarify yeah. but we i meant like the leary lot then so um, applied for one of them and they said we no. applied we got uh, plan we got plans for both right yeah under the mvp right the design plans were paid for by mvp which Correct. which gives us a leg up i think actually because they already paid for the design right and you would think they would want those designs to be implemented correct yeah, but I thought we applied for the Leary and we didn't get it. No, we we submitted, as I recall, we submitted it in the letter of intent, and they said that um, their response was that they didn't really want to pay for parking lots. That wasn't Got the it. intent of the program, but okay. they would pay for the green components. The right. green, right? Okay, so tree maybe boxes, not the paint, tree but filters. the tree box, yeah, yeah. those yeah. Kind of, yeah, those other entities. So maybe we can split it up here and there. So yeah. I guess maybe a meeting with Darius and us to kind of figure out a plan of attack he had called me this week and said hey can we yeah. get this back because he's trying to get yeah my, my concern, applications planning going so my concern was that we're pull, pulling up the bushes by the um we are yeah uh by the cafeteria because of safety issues and, and that and is I, in the, the plan yeah that, yeah that i showed to yeah and i and i want to make sure that we're dealing with the water right because there's right. a ton of water that comes off there and we do have we did right. do some drainage when kip was here we did right. that drainage right. But we really need to but study those, that. If we pull those bushes, that's a huge. I mean, those roots take up. They a do. Lot of water. They eat a lot so, of water. Yeah. Well, you know, in preparation for having this discussion, I did ask Chris Nolan to pull some of the previous MVP contracts because we're going to need somebody to lead on this. And uh, some you've been involved in both of those design plan projects, so um, you know, I, I actually think we should. We should ask and we're going to find out by early spring whether we're going to get any money for this and then we'll know exactly yeah. where we are okay i thought it was a lot longer time frame like a year or something before we would yeah. find out okay so if we're here then let's get a meeting together and get that going i just wanted to catch it while you were here and sure was thinking about it so we knew so, what to kind of reply so back to darius about what we need to do then is um as an item not anticipated because none of us anticipated right. it. We did not. Discussion until we saw um, you. That I would make a motion under un, uh, item not anticipated that Chris would move ahead with a letter of intent. Um, you know, further discussion of what parts, what elements of both those plans could be recouped under the MVP. Because sure. we're moving forward with both of those projects for safety reasons. Right. And because we want the Leary lot done. So maybe we can get a meeting together with um, Darius and kind of talk about what input they have on the plowing part of it, and Kevin as well, because I know we that was, Kevin, Kevin's been involved. We want make sure Kevin yeah. uh, figures out how he's going to. We have to have some way to main, maintain it. But the other person I want to make sure we're involving is John Pachork because um, there was a, a couple other security issues, um, mm -hmm. design issues that were not in the MVP design that you know. I don't, want to say, I don't up. want to say yeah. buffers or right. you know, barriers, but there was some a couple other things along those lines mm -hmm. that John wanted to make sure was incorporated. So now, well, I do sure. now have, um, I re requested from the engineering company, EBI, um, a large set of plans because I know those smaller ones were hard to look at. Oh. Um, so I have those. We could sit, sit down at a table and, and look at that. But That'd I do great. know that you know, for example, the, the issue of plowing was considered by EBI yep. and that's why they presented the plan the way they did. So it, it was, you know, yeah, let's part, of the, get part of the thing. And, okay. Take a look at it. Yeah. Pull it apart. And Casey had her hand up. I don't know if she still wants to ask. Hey, Casey. Actually, it was Kevin that had a question earlier. Oh. Yeah, Kevin. Hope he didn't step away. No, he's he, he was there. there. He was there. I, I don't but he may have stepped away from the camera. <laughs> we All right, I tried. All right, that's fine. We'll catch him when he comes back. Um, yeah. So did you did you actually make a motion, Carolyn, or did you? I think she did. Yeah, I did. She made a motion to um, have the, the letter of intent as not anticipated to try and group in some of the MVP aspects of both of these have, projects. We can't have. I right. mean, we have to have a this direction. <laughs> right. I'll, I'll, so I'll second that. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And we'll have to work with um, Casey on, um, you know, how, what sort of um, compensation we're going to providing for Chris to, to 
and this process really nailed down kind of the reporting and all that because that's been bills we just want to make sure we're easy on staff understand <laughs> we're losing a few of them so we have been losing a few we're gaining more which is great it's the end of the meeting but yeah so any help you can provide there would be great um so and then let's get a meeting together with darius and kevin and kind of yeah. pull that plan apart sometime in the next week or so that sounds great thank you yeah thank, thank you all thanks for all you do thank appreciate you. it take care all right thank you and we have we've made these poor ladies wait forever I'm sorry to make you wait. <laughs> I really appreciate your flexibility and patience. Um, I wish it was 630, but it's not. <laughs> we have um, Mass in Motion Municipal Wellness and Leadership Initiative proposals. So. Yes. Welcome. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. And stay, stay I know it's name. turning into a very late night for you. Yep. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Great. But this is good to have out. We can share. Yep. Perfect. Um, and I think... You've got these in your package, but these are packages that are very unusual. Oh, okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. So. <laughs> here we go. So update us. What are we doing here? Sorry to interrupt. Did somebody turn the camera off? Oh, thank you. Yeah, can you tilt that camera? Oh, do we have it unplugged? It just went off all of a sudden a second ago. Oh, maybe. It... Oh, there we go. That's weird. Come back on, please. That's weird. You had a bat. You had a battery. There it is. Oh, there, oh, there you are. Thanks. Yep. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Chris, for notifying us. All right. Should I? kick us off. Yeah, please we ready? do. Please do. Um, so thank you for having us. Um, my name is Rachel Stoller. I work at the Franklin Regional Council of Governments. This is Carol Foote from LifePath, and we are working together um, to present. So I'm presenting about the Mass in Motion initiative, which the town of Deerfield signed on to back about a year ago when we were applying for the grant. Um, and Carol is here representing the uh, regional age-friendly initiative. So I'll let Carol kick it off and then okay. I have stuff to say as well. Great. So, <laughs> so yeah. welcome. Thank you. And thank you for having us. As Rachel said, I'm Carol Foote from Life Path, and I'm the age-friendly um, Franklin County and North Quabbin project uh, program director. And, um, you know, just want to tell you a little bit about what's happening, why Life Path has taken on this project with the partnership of the FERCOG. Um, and basically, we're aging faster than ever before in the history of life. Especially the last so, three years. It's like <laughs> very fast. Exactly. <laughs> um, and so um, just, you know, speaking about Deerfield, as of 218 data from the Healthy Aging Collaborative, which I shared with you, 21.2% um, of the population is over 60 and 16.2% is over 65. So, you know, it's a considerable um, portion of the, of the um, population and it's only growing from there. Um, and so what we are doing with this age friendly, um, we are taking the cue um, from 20 years ago when the World Health Organization um, started this movement, this age friendly movement, and it has since been taken over by AARP. And so, you know, that's who it's managed by in um, the United States. And Life Path is doing the lo very local um, project. Our catchment area is 30 towns, of which Deerfield is one of them. Um, and so the project itself was first getting towns to sign on and as um, to be recognized as age friendly. And I think Deerfield did that yeah. kind of before everybody else. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Thank you for doing that. First in many things, <laughs> Deerfield. Yes. Um, and then other towns have signed on. We're at 25 of our 30 towns. So we are, you know, right. feeling great about the fact that this area wants to be recognized and do some work to be considered and to look age friendly. Um, and so AARP gives us these eight domains to kind of look at are these different buckets to say we can do the work here, 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 here. And so that's in housing, outdoor spaces, transportation, communication and information, civic participation and employment, respect and social inclusion, health services and community supports and social participation. So in doing this work, we can try to address all of those, but no, we, <laughs> we want to look at the things that will speak to your own community or this region um, and make some changes that 
you know, makes sense for yep. Deerfield or the region. Um, and so the project that um, LifePath is currently in the middle of is that those towns asking in our catchment er er uh, area, sorry, to sign on to be recognized as age friendly um, through AARP. And so we're 25 of 30 towns there. We have conducted a needs assessment survey that was region wide. And so Deerfield had, I think 55 respondents, 51% uh, uh, respondents of the 1,982. So almost 2,000 um, responses that we received. So um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the specific information that we got from Deerfield respondents. Um, but, you know, Rachel and I are here to kind of talk about how our work is meshing together. And some of that is what has come out of the survey and how that's gonna be used with the Mass in Motion work. So take it away, Rachel. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so um, Mass in Motion, if you're not familiar with it, is a statewide movement that focuses on supporting healthy eating and active living in our communities where we live, work, and play, and, um, and in doing so reduces chronic mm -hmm. disease. Um, the, uh, the Mass in Motion grant that we're talking about right now is designed to be complementary to the regional effort. So I want to keep stressing it. That's why we come together because mm -hmm. we want to demonstrate that we are working together. I'm actually on her steering committee. <laughs> um, so Mass in Motion has existed in the state for over 10 years. Franklin County has had it for about 10 years. I've been the coordinator um, under the previous incarnation of Mass in Motion, we worked on things like supporting complete streets work, which I know Deerfield has been involved in, supporting the initiation of the regional age-friendly work, um, and doing some work on farm to institution, working to get more local farm products into institutional food services, such as the public schools, particularly the public schools. Um, then last year, the um, Mass in Motion was rebid um, and so we decided to apply, we as the FACOG decided that we wanted to apply to do something that would complement the regional age-friendly work by offering towns an opportunity to focus in on their own age-friendly planning specific to their town. And so 11 towns signed on to apply with us. I don't know if you remember signing on because it was a while ago. Um, and we submitted the application and we didn't hear until May and I was very surprised that we were funded. So now there are only about 10 mass in motion communities before there were something like 29. So they reduced the number, they increased the funding. So um, we took a little bit of time to get organized and now um, we're coming to you to tell you more about mass in motion, but some, right. some important tenets of mass in motion in general are that we um, address changing community co conditions by looking at long-term solutions and the root causes of issues. So we work really hard to do that. We also use a leading with race framework, which understands that um, the social construct of race is at the root of many of our health inequities. Mm -hmm even in communities that are predominantly white. So it's important to understand that and also look at the inequities um, throughout our communities. As Carol said, our communities are aging. We want to encourage new people to come into our communities. How do we ensure that our communities are as welcoming as possible to all people? So those are a couple uh, tenets of Mass in Motion and I'll, I'll tell you more after Carol's talked a little bit about the data. Yeah, so I handed you this um, yes. spreadsheet, and just to give you a quick, um, you know, orientation, the um, red line is where Deerfield falls, and the black dot is where the region as a whole falls. So when, and that's noted at the top, so that, so you don't remember that, but um, you know, we wanted to kind of put them against each other so that you can see where Deerfield sits um, as opposed to, you know, or up against in contrast to um, the region itself. And, you know, I I will share just a few super highlights. Uh, so we the can, highlights of the so, highlights. So we can kind of move through this um, quickly, but, um, you know, Deerfield respondents are, um, has a have a higher percentage um, responding that they're, uh, sorry, that they live alone. Yep. And so that, um, you know, is a place where a lot of work can be done. And if any um, of those respondents were thinking about making a change to their housing, 
um, they would look for better access to transportation and um, look for a place where cost of living is a little less. Um, and then they have re uh, reported that they receive um, less caregiving support um, and report good access to adequate caregiver support. So they're feeling well supported as far as what they need for caregivers or being a caregiver, as far as caregiving or being a caregiver, I'm sorry. Um, so, but they also feel that they have less conveniently located healthcare services and less access to wellness programs and mental health providers than the regional sample. So, you know, there's some work that could happen there. Um, Deerfield respondents are interested in volunteering for a neighbor's support group, um, though 19% more than the regional sample would like to receive report, uh, um, support from a group like that. Um, digital access and literacy are in step with the region, but Deerfield reports being stronger Zoom and video call users. Um, and Deerfield respondents feel they have fewer opportunities to volunteer and engage with a Deerfield civic type committee. Um, yeah. So I, you know, those were just some little snippets. Oh, it's in the back of the packet. Um, with some okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and there's way more to look at in here. Yeah, it's good data in here. <laughs> yeah, this is great. And yeah. I assume our senior center director has this as well. I assume. Um, you know, we haven't sent it out. This was kind of the day. Initial. Oh, okay. Great. <laughs> the great. Yeah. We'll of the information. Get, get her this but, info. You know, we, um, Rachel will speak about, um, you know, forming a committee here in the town of Deerfield, um, which, you know, it would be lovely if someone from the Council on Aging could um, join that. But I am forming groups that are theme specific. So regionally looking at transportation, housing, um, healthcare and community supports, and civic participation. Um, and so that's the difference between, you know, what Rachel and I are doing. So looking regionally, and I've got these four work groups, and Rachel is looking for. Oh, are you handing it over <laughs> to me? I'm handing it over. Okay. Um, so getting back to what we're looking for with Mass in Motion, um, if you want to look at the second page of the Memorandum of Understanding, that kind of gives a, yep. a scope of work. Um, and so the timeline, which is also in your, it's <laughs> page 21 of your um, slideshow. Yep. Uh, so right now we are having the first step in the timeline, which is the initial meeting with the um, select board. Um, and I'm not sure who is on Zoom. I, I know that Casey um, invited some other folks, including the Board of Health, the Council on Aging. I don't know who's we here. Are we are on the Board of Health, too. Oh, we oh, are all kinds of Oh, hats. cool. So okay, great. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So that's covered. That's efficient. Um, <laughs> uh, so anyway, we, so we wanted to explain um, how the, the process works. The Memorandum of Understanding does offer $4,230, possibly a few dollars more, depending on how it all shakes out with all the towns, um, to support the planning process, which will go until the end of June. So. The planning process includes this meeting, um, the town convening some sort of a working group to meet with me and some other for COG staff to do this planning work. Um, the planning work involves looking at the this data that um, Carol is talking about from the regional assessment, looking at the data in more detail and doing some, I learned a new word today, ground truthing, like seeing how accurate is this data for this community? What are some other things we need to know? Um, there are some other questions that we wanna ask particularly related to food access because mm -hmm. those weren't asked in the um, regional assessment and that's an important component of health. Um, so we'll be looking at the data, um, then identifying what are the most compelling issues in this community, looking at those underlying causes, that's a lot of fun. Um, and there will be an opportunity uh, well, it's a required opportunity uh, for at least a couple of people from this town to participate in a health equity training that will be, it's a one day training. It will be in Greenfield in February. I should have the dates very soon. Okay. Um, this, uh, there will be breakfast and excellent lunch provided to, to keep people <laughs> interested for the day. 
Um, but what I'm excited about with this training, it will be provided by Mass in Motion, um, and it will focus on health equity in rural communities. And I don't know if any of you know Kirby Lisi, who used to be with the um, rural health, the division of rural health. She's now the Mass in Motion director, and we have secured her as one of the trainers oh, for this. So she's from the North Quabbin. She's from. She is a farmer. Um, she now works for the Department of Public Health, but she knows rural communities. That's so great. that's a that's a great relief to me that that mm -hmm. is who one of the trainers will be. Um, so we'll have that in February, and then the the work group will continue to look at data, identify issues and underlying causes, and then get to the point of identifying strategies that you would like to undertake. There will be another 4,000 some odd dollars next year if the strategies can be implemented with that. But also if you choose a strategy that requires applying for funding, we will help identify sources of funding. Yeah. Um, Jennifer Remillard, our, our, our senior uh, center director, will be uh, all over this, I have no doubt. I mean, it really ties in with all the work that we're trying yeah. to trying to do at the moment, too. Yeah. So we also, you know, know that you work very closely with Whiteley and yep, we do. Conway and, and yeah. you know Sunderland. Sunderland. And so, you know, there are opportunities there to, you know, pool or at least work right. together and that kind of thing. So, you know, yeah. it's a mini regional, right? Really. Yeah, it is. It's in yeah. Our yeah. Kind how of many of those how many of those towns are identified as are they in the 10? Uh, Waitley and Sunderland are also part of Mass in oh, Motion. So we, we were in Waitley last night and we'll be in Sunderland on Monday. That's great. So it's great. They're going to get their 4,200 worth of work and, we're, and, and we will. So, yeah. oh, that's so fantastic. Um, we all pull together. Yeah. We all pull together. Well, so not. yeah, you don't have to make that decision no. right okay. now. We wanted to give each town a chance to sort of look at their own data and then make some decisions. And if you would like to team up, if all three towns want to team it up, that's like fine. That. But we didn't we didn't want to assume that. We do we do really almost everything together, South County. Obviously we have a our uh, EMS um mm -hmm. is South County and our senior center is South County, which yeah. is Wheatley Deerfield Sunderland. So and our director kind of manages and takes care of the seniors and works with the um, Council on Aging in all three towns. So we, we try to tackle everything together. You have to. If right. you're a small community, you have to get grouped no, together. No, I think I think that would be we, awesome. Well together. And we so. just we wanted to make that point because we do know that about yeah. this area, okay. you know, okay. just that you are closely knit that way. Yeah. But, well, as Rachel said, you know, to make sure that you it know, could you're be independent also... if needed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. For sure. No, understand well, that. It just yep. it, it makes sense that we pull together and try to come up with a hemp product that's that's better mm -hmm. for all three yeah. of us. Yeah. But I, I think I mean I've in the past over the years I've you know um testified that one of the things that's really um discouraging is health access to seniors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um I, I really would like you to address that somehow because you know in the past if, if your friend if your family or your neighbors they could take you to a, a doctor's appointment in Greenfield and no big deal. Yeah. Now all the healthcare systems are all your doctors are in Springfield now. They're all their specialists, everybody. So now it's it's intimidating for older drivers, friends to drive friends to the doctor's appointments. It's intimidating for family members who have to take time off yep. to take, you know, it's an all day trip now to go down and these, visit those doctors. So we we truly have healthcare access issues for our seniors. Yep. And um also, you know, there's I know from the pandemic. That there's food security issues mm -hmm. because people just are not storing, um, you know, they don't have things in the pantry like they did years ago, and and but part of it is just going to getting to the grocery store. You have to go out of town, and mm -hmm. again, it's transportation. So it's yep. transportation and healthcare access, mm -hmm. and it's yep. it's really it, it hurts our seniors really oh, a lot. Absolutely, and it absolutely. doesn't help that and everything is more expensive. Oh, yes. Yeah, and we have an overhousing situation where yes. people they're living in giant old houses by themselves. Yes, and they need you know support, and you know we're trying to get senior housing. We're working on that. But Sunderland just completed yes, their their yeah. project project, and, um, which is great. But you know we we do have an you know, for the foreseeable future, we have an overhousing problem. People say housing is not available. That's not true. It's just yeah. that it's inappropriate right. for older seniors. Well, yes. and and they want to stay in their homes, which is yeah. totally understandable. So yeah. we've got to come up with it is a community way to deal with some of these issues that seniors have. Yeah. 
Um, just to speak directly to that one person who raised a family and is now alone yeah. in that four bedroom house or whatever it is, um, a plug for uh, a new program that LifePath is um, is is managing, spearheading um, called HomeShare. And it is, um, you know, exactly to address that, that someone who doesn't want to leave their home, maybe yep. they're at a point that they do need some more support mm -hmm. and that there is an exchange for living in that space and providing some support Transportation, for that, some support. you know, yeah, absolutely. so, um, you know, I That's would encourage great. anyone who might be open to that type of situation. There's a vetting process, there are background sure. checks, there's that kind of stuff. Um, but it's a brand new, brand new program that life has because of That's the need fantastic. that you've just described. It, right. So is there a, is there a, a vetting process is great, but yes. I mean, the actuality of living in a, in a space, particularly when you're dealing with an aging population and dementia might be coming into play, um, there's got to be constant, you know, follow up. Yeah. Yeah. And, and as I understand it, there is management in that way, but yeah. that the arrangement is um, is made between the parties. It's not like this is a cookie cutter. Got it. Oh you yeah. Know, kind yeah. of a thing. Yeah. yeah. I'm just suggesting. So like that, that stays involved. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. otherwise, it you know could be problematic. Sure. We just yeah. had a dog hearing tonight. So. <laughs> <laughs> <You're> <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> anyway, okay. sorry to put the plug in, but I couldn't. Yeah, help no, that was good. It's good to know. It's good to know yeah. what's out there and what people are working on. Right. So, so, um, so I just wanted to wrap up in terms of the mass in motion process. Um, one of the, as I mentioned, mass in motion uses a leading with race framework, and we ask what are called the racial justice reframing questions, which will be part of this process, sort of looking at existing policies or programs. And as we think about new um, strategies, asking the following questions, which are who benefits, who is harmed, who influences, who decides, and what are the unintended consequences? And so, um, you know, I've been sort of ingrained with these, asking these questions now for years, but they're really helpful in thinking about uh, uh, who might be in experiencing inequities and how do we address those? Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to introduce those questions. They're great to ask, you know, in, in really any any circumstance. Um, and uh, I'm not going to ask you to vote on the MOU tonight. I don't know if you've had a chance to review it. Not yet, it's, but it's fine to do it at a future meeting. Okay. Um, and we are asking you to um, pull together a group of people. I also wanted to mention that the funding can be used really for anything that will support the planning process. So okay. if you need to pay for transportation to get people to work group meetings or compensate work group members or compensate someone to be a work group leader, uh, compensate people to attend this full day training. Um, right. If you need, you know, equipment for meetings, anything, yep. food for meetings, okay. all of those things, um, it can be useful. That's super helpful. Really helpful. I, I'm anxious to talk to, to Jennifer about it for sure. And I'm sure she'll hear from. Yeah. And, and also please feel free to too. reach out to me if you have yeah. questions or if there, somebody else needs to understand it better, they can just get in touch with me and, um, and I can meet with them. In the back here. Got yes. It. Perfect. And, and mine too for the regional four work groups. Yes. And so I'm yes. putting in a plug for the regional <laughs> yeah. work groups as well and as the individual. Yes. 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 Great. That's really great. <laughs> Well, yeah. it's great because it feels like there is, um, you know, momentum and interest it's and need, time. you know, yep. right now. And so, um, so we're excited every time we do one of these because, you know, we do walk away with a positive feeling yeah. like, yes. yeah, moving forward. Yeah, yeah, it feels good. It's good work. Thank you. So just one quick question. Yeah. I um, I noticed yes. that 52% <laughs> of Deerfield folks think this is a fair or poor area as a place to age and um, mm -hmm. hopefully something that you can help us move up. Yeah. And, it, sure. and it's, it reflects the a region. Small, yeah. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Well, it's <laughs> the true. The region is right next to it and the yep. field is, you know. It's sort of similar. Yeah. 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 Um, but I think that it is reflective of what the need is, mm -hmm. you know, that as we age, we need. And the obstacles that are here. Yeah. 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 So where both of our goals are to increase the number of people who say it's a good place to age. That's, That's right. Perfect. We're on board. <laughs> We're happy yeah. with that. Yeah. Yes. Sounds like a good goal. Okay. So thank you so much. For thank yes, you very thank much you. for we having us tonight. Okay. Don't yeah. worry about it. We um, yes. we'll it's be been a long night for you. <laughs> yeah. That's right.
<laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Casey. Happy, happy holidays. You too. Uh, let's see. Next item is the Healthy Soils Action Plan release. Did we do that already? Um, or not? Well, I don't see it in the package. No. But... The reason why um, I'm, I want to just hold off on that. Oh, okay. Is because I'm I'm on the uh, State Commission for Soil and uh, Water and Related Resources, and and I'm a member of that task force. Yep. Supposedly, the governor is going to approve the Massachusetts plan before the end of the year. Okay. Which is in only in two weeks. Yeah. And they're also supposed to release the money for our conservation district, which had put in a $40,000 grant request for, you know, doing our yard by yard program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that hasn't been announced yet either. Although I feel like we sent a letter of intent. We were asked to apply and that usually means we're going to get it. Yeah. But, but have... the money hasn't been released okay. yet or announced. So I, I hesitant for us to approve this in case we need to make some adjustments. That's fine. We'll come okay. back to it. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Tim, did you want to hit on the old year for wastewater treatment discussion thing um, tonight? Or do you... Yeah, I okay. think that that's um, a reasonable thing to do. Um, I had a uh, first, it, it, are, are we reached the select board reports thing? Oh, yes, we have. So okay. you, can, so, you can tie it right into yeah, that if you want. Sure. Yeah, the first thing I wanted to do was say that I have written and shared an, a letter to uh, Maura Healy and Kim Driscoll about oh. the library project. And um, I'm not sure if it's been shared with the rest of you, but I, I asked um, the uh, aides for both Comerford and Blay uh, if they had any information about where to send the, the letters because they're in transition. And there's only in, um, you can file it electronically through the transition team website, which um, I can, I think, they shared the links with Casey and Chris, but if not, I'll forward them to them. So I wanted you to, uh, I don't know if you, it's similar to the I, previous I letter. I did see an email real quickly, but I'd love to yeah. read it while you talk. Yeah. Basically, it uh, talks about our meeting with Kim Driscoll during the campaign. Yep. And, and it also mentions uh, a recent experience in Westboro where they uh, their vote went against the town because they didn't want to finance the extra 13 million. So um, I think it's a, uh, some of the same themes in the first letter we prepared, yep. but uh, advances the ball. And uh, so I, I read the letter, Tim, and I am 100% supportive of us sending this, making sure this gets out. We need to hustle. Um, I think Senator Tarr's um, office is the one that's the lead on our legislation right. for the library money. And um, I mentioned him in the letter. Yes. So we just need to make sure that we keep the pressure up. Mm -hmm. um, and that was one of the priorities I wanted to make sure we met with the other towns down at, at the, the MMA, MMA conference yep. so that we can coordinate our efforts because, you know, I, we we have a the ARPA money seems to be off the table, but there's now IRA money that um, Inflation Reduction Act money, and there's also Pavo money. And my understanding is that they're thinking of doing the Pavo money, and what the Pavo money is is really just left over at the end of the fiscal year. So we're talking about April or May timeframe, right. which is still fine. Right. Um, I mean, we'll take whatever, but. My concern is that they're just going to give us a few hundred thousand, and what we need is a few, you know, three or four million. Mm -hmm. So, um, I I want to be able to make sure that we have real actionable steps on how we're going to follow. You mean up the MMA this. or? Yeah. Yeah. I I mean, we we got to keep the pressure up so that somehow, I mean, it's still a small amount of money, but. For us as individual communities, it's a huge amount of right. impact. Right. As as is the recorder article that Chris Larrabee wrote, you know, that today, you know, the impact can be reduced by yeah, an well amount. Very well done. Thank you. If uh, we get the additional funding. Yeah. And um, so if this is okay, we can just um yeah. you yeah. know, either either I can send it with board approval or Casey or Well, Chris I can, can make a motion it. that we approve the letter to be sent. I'll second the motion. Yeah. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. You can, you can use our stamp or 
you know, we can sign it if it's ready. Either one. Yeah. Oh, it's just you on the, on the bottom. No, anyway. it's Oliver. Oh, it is. Okay, yeah. great. I just. Yeah, it says the select board, right, Tim? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I just didn't want to name. Our, I didn't have our names stacked because I want to keep it on two pages. Two page. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> that sounds good. Because before it was like we were all on the back page. Yes, yes. Um, that's fine. It and then um, to follow up on your question about the old deer, uh, the old Deerfield wastewater treatment plant, uh, yeah. I recently reached out to several communities that have had similar. I think all of the, the towns out here had their sewer plants built in the same era, mm -hmm. and they're all confronting the problems with those plants. All EPA and I mean, slowly but surely, we're all getting to the same place where we're seeking USDA grants and funding and loans, and. Um, one thing that came out, and I think, you know, coming full circle, Elisa Mead may have advised us months ago before I was on the select board that the town, in order to make sure that we get what we want, the town really has to control the design process. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm sure that's for legal reasons and for reasons of control and for reasons of being able to, uh, you know, enforce contracts, et cetera. So um, I've sort of come around to the idea that although it might be interesting to have advice from an engineer working for another agency to contribute to thought thinking about a plan the town develops that really the town needs to employ its own engineer and make its own decisions and uh, proceed in that fashion. So I just wanted to mention that in the meeting and you know, let you you folks think about it as well or or and and because uh, we do need to start moving forward on this um the recent problem with the electrical uh situation at, at the old Deerfield plant shows us that things can anything can happen anything can happen and although it's you know being able to be limped along um and I'd also like to I met with Eric Meals um and had a good conversation with him and he said uh, that he would like to contribute to discussions during the design phase Absolutely. because he can say you know this is really not important mm -hmm. this is less important and he runs it all day yeah and he knows what you know like uh, the south Deerfield plant has a grit system mm -hmm. and it also has um, headworks that strips out stuff and Say in a smaller plant, maybe you don't need the grit system. Right, if you've got the headworks. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, right. you know, particularly if um, any of the schools has a pre-treatment mm -hmm. where they actually treat the, uh, the septage before it gets to the plant. Mm -hmm. um, so all of those things seem to make sense to me, but um, I'm not the one only one involved in this and you have so much more knowledge of this well not, not a lot you're like you're really getting up to speed where i was so i, I really you know i i really appreciate the nonprofit's effort to um to help help with this project because they they do see how how much they use it and it is you know it's all in everybody's best interest to come up with a with a program that a, a product that will work for all of us long into the future um you know and i know DPC put together a kind of a memorandum of, of kind of our our needs, you know, what, what we feel is most important in that plant. And we don't feel like, we're, you know, certainly you can look at our usage and say, oh, this plant is permitted for way more than we use on a day-to-day -day basis. But it really isn't designed for a day-to-day -day basis. It's, it's designed for worst case scenario. And in 2011, when we had the horrible rains and 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 Irene, we went way over. So yeah. plus reducing your usage um, and, and asking the DEP to say, oh, we want to reduce how much our plant is permitted for really shoots us in the push long-term because it, it loses that ability for growth. And I, I do, so and there was that, and there was a few other things that we felt were important, like headworks, clarifier, you know, looking at different ways to, to do it. And I think the last plan that kind of came up, well, it wasn't perfect. It wasn't a massive you know money spent to kind of lay the whole thing out but it was a good back of the envelope plan that i think that we all felt comfortable we should move forward with um and i had really was hoping that the the nonprofit showed an interest in wanting to kind of help with the design i was really hoping the two our design team and if they have somebody in mind could sit in a room for one day or a half a day and just say 
these are our wants and needs. And if they have another idea that's dramatically different, we will listen. But generally, um, you know, I, I just, it's not rocket science. So it's not like there's some other thing that it's not fusion, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Energy. So we're not going to like come up with a separate thing that's going to be so dramatically different that it's going to be a whole lot less money than what we're looking at. And certainly it does cost municip municipalities more money to do projects than private entities. But I still believe like we, the town needs control over what we build, who we hire, and what we're going to do long term. And mm -hmm. we need all the help we can get. So I just felt like if we could all get in a room and talk about it, or not all of us, but just the yeah. engineers to kind of lay that out. I yeah. think we just need to move forward in that direction. Right. I do too, but it would be good to make sure that Eric is part of that. Absolutely. He yeah. works yeah. the plant and knows it better than any of us. And, and I do think that um, there is a real conceptual design that's been presented to the town as opposed to, you know, an idea that it can be built for less money, but there's no real plan to discuss. Mm -hmm. And rather than, um, rather than encouraging, you know, anybody to spend money on a speculative thing that the town is unlikely to implement, um, that engineering firm is not working for the town. It's working for a group of entities that have an idea that they can do something less expensively um at the same time you know the town is the entity that has the ability to go to usda and get loans and grants at you know below market rates so um it could end up that working on our plan would be less expensive for the the nonprofits in any case so mm -hmm. that's just where i am and um you know i at our last meeting there was an expression that um you know I thought we were working cooperatively on this and perhaps they feel that they are too, but they just sort of said, oh, we're gonna move ahead with this. So um, without even engaging on the plan that, that we brought back to them. So my feeling is that it would be saving them money um, to just maybe think about working with our engineers on a plan. And, and you know, we obviously have to come to some conclusion about which engineer we're gonna use, mm -hmm. et cetera. Um, we went through an extensive RFQ process before, mm -hmm. and I think the town vetted several of the people and decided DPC was the right way to go. Um, we've had a good experience, if I'm understanding correctly. Mm -hmm. So, in any case, I think I think I'm now, you know, in favor of you know taking this back in house and and uh, moving forward. Looks like there's a hand up. Oh, hey, Julie. I don't know. Hi. Um, there may be, just to throw a comment out there, there may be value in having a completely independent estimate that you can compare back to the um, other engineers project. No, I, I think that all along I've said that I think that's an interesting way to go. My problem is that the engineer is not working for the town. So if they want to pay for an engineer that reports to the town, that's different than paying for an engineer who's going to give an answer that a group that has a special interest in wants. So it's not independent. Um, so I, I, I do have that problem with that thought process. And then if we get a, a design that in theory might work, what I heard from a couple of towns is that that went through similar exercises was that at the end of the day, they're now having to go to the USDA to repair problems that arose after plans were implemented and put in the ground, and now they're not functioning properly, and they've created ancillary problems. Um, and so I worry about the risk that a town uh, in pursuing something like that. That's just my thought. And uh, I would love to have somebody engage with DPC, for instance, on the plan that the town has sort of come to think is, is a logical place to go, but there didn't seem to be any interest in that in the last meeting. So maybe I'm misreading what I saw, but. Yeah, I think we get, let's get that answer, right? You know, right on the table and just say, look, where are we at with this? And we think it's, we've been saying it makes most sense to get the engineers in a room together to have this initial discussion 
right off the bat and just see where we're at. And, and you know, I, if again, if they want to keep continuing to develop a plan, but if, if you're not getting the buy-in here, I think that's what they were looking for. And we just feel like I would have buy-in if we could have our engineer in the room to have a discussion initially on like ground rules, but that hasn't happened yet. And mm -hmm. it's been weeks and I worry like, and I'm not sure, um, you know, it's a, it's not rocket science, but it's also not totally simple. You're right. You're and, right. Um, you know, somebody picks up on the word, what's the minimum requirement? Mm -hmm. And they focus on the minimum requirement and then they don't, they come up with a plan that is inadequate in other areas. And, you know, you haven't defined every possibility and then you get into an argument. And, uh, but yeah. Julia has her hand again. Oh, hey. Welcome. And back to my value of the independent estimate, though. If they go ahead and do an independent estimate and it comes up radically lower than the other estimate, then you compare the two and you can say these are the differences. This, you know, this more expensive plan brings in A, B, and C features that your plan doesn't have. Mm -hmm. And it allows you to think through the cost of those features. Um, yeah. So. You know. no, no, that's a, you know, I think what we wanted was let's value engineer this plant design we have come up, proposed, and there doesn't seem to be an interest in doing that. And if we move ahead, we're going to have to pay our engineer, whoever that is, to, to go forward on bringing the plan up to a point where it can be submitted to the USDA. Um, do we want to wait four months? Oh, is that the time frame they're talking about? They're talking about. April or May, when they would come back to us with uh, 25% a plan um, and spend a, a considerable, not an, in, not an insignificant, well, certainly for the town, it's a very significant number. Huge number. And then we don't go forward with that plan and they end up paying for the other plan anyway. Um, and so anyway, um, we don't have to make a decision tonight. But okay, just voice them where you're feeling and right. where we're at. Okay. I have to say I'm in agreement with Tim on this. Right. I, I'm, I do value the other plan. It sounded like they were going to spend the money anyway. It's up to them. We can look at it. But I think it's necessary for us to move ahead too. Um, I'm, I'm just worried because nothing could happen in five years. Um, we could band-aid it mm -hmm. and continue on and nothing will happen. But what I am worried about is if something happens, we're in a crisis situation, we're going to pay 10 times more for a Band-Aid solution to yeah. keep it going. And that's not appropriate way to spend our money. We know we have to do something. We know it's at the end of life. So we, sh I agree, we should be making at least some effort to move forward. Um, I don't feel like we have, I, I don't want to commit a lot of money yet, but I think we need to be making sure that we're putting our lists together, what should be incorporated. And then, I mean, we can have a discussion with the nonprofits when they come with their 25%. It sounded like they were going to have a phased approach for the spring. Well, you know, we got so much stuff going on that maybe they'll come with their first list of stuff and we can match it to our list of stuff and say, look, these are the kind of things that are missing or, oh, look, it looks like a pretty good match. Or the other thing is to say, if you want to have an alternate plan, donate the money to the town, we'll hire a different engineering firm, we'll ask them to design a plant uh, up to a certain point and then make a determination of which direction we want to proceed. But I do think the town has to be the one hiring the engineer um, because otherwise you're not having an engineer working for the town. Yeah. And you're not controlling the process. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. All right. That sounds I good. Would, it is, would be lovely just to Kevin has his hand up. Hey, Kevin. Kevin, you're, you're muted. muted. Okay, got it. Um, <clears throat> just a point of information. We are working with with DEA right now as far as the um, pipe going from the track all the, the rest of the way. Um, I, I, re I reached out to DPC. 
we got some updated uh, some numbers and and we sent resent them out again. Um, so now that's open for discussion to see to see where we can go uh, possibly towards springtime. <clears throat> so at least we're 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 moving forward with it, making sure that you know we're trying to get as much done as we possibly can with with the assistance from from the nonprofits. Yeah, and they've been super helpful in that the piping and the and the manholes and stuff. That project came out really great last year or a year yeah. and a half or so now. And yeah. um, we, we just need to need to finish it the last leg. It's it's the last, but it's it's still a lot of money. You it know, because if, yeah. if if it was yeah. if it was all just just lining. Um, that wouldn't be quite so bad, but there's a lot of open cut that needs to be right. put in there too. And with that being said, the open cut is um, probably three times the cost of the lining. So, it um, is permitting and the water table and exactly, you know, and it is what it is, you know. And then the other thing we really, really ought to think about is is uh, maybe moving that over a little bit um, because we are right there at the edge where we've got uh, deterioration from that little oxbow area by. Uh, Little metal road heading out to the plant, so sure. that's something else we need to. I mean, there, there, there's, there's the big picture we really need to look at to make sure that when we're going forward, we're going to do this the right way. Um, you know, that may involve having to, you know, speak with some of the farmers. You know, can we get a right away through here? You know, can instead of a, a straight flow where we're at right now, can you know, can we excuse <clears throat> me, come down the hill and 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 head east a little bit further into the fields? So that way, you've got a little bit more of a buffer because. You right. know, like you keep saying with with the events that we are having, um, you know, that embankment continue just deteriorates and pretty soon, I don't want to say immediately, but, you know, a couple of more Irene's and there'd be a pretty good chance that that sewer main would be exposed. So, I mean, if we're if, if things going to get moved, you know, if we're going to be replacing, you know, let's let's not shoot ourselves in the foot and let's let's go a little bit extra and make sure that we get ourselves climate resilient for this project. Kevin, I can't agree more. That was um, that was the, we got the grant that seven almost eight hundred thousand dollar grant hazardous mitigation grant to replace that section of pipe. Yep. Yep. Um, and then we couldn't use it because our hazardous mitigation plan was um, held up at FEMA. Yep. You know, to approval. We, yep. I remember that. Time. Yep. Remember that. Yep. Um, I do. And one of the things, the reason why it was so important to get that pipe replaced was because it was at risk for one or two more events yeah so we, need to re, we need okay. to replace Let's it somewhere that. else mm -hmm. so who, who did the engineering on this project DPC. Kevin? DPC. Right. So, uh, DPC. And, and and just and just so we're aware you know what what was shared is just strictly uh replacement of in kind where it is now like pull it right. out and 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 just replace as you go along um you know right. this other would require a little bit more again because you'd be t having to talk with with landowners um and you know you, more engineering have to be put into play because you'd have to look to see what your elevations are to make sure you know you're not getting yourself into trouble there by moving out so far you know you don't want a flat right. spot and i mean there's you know there's no there's no letters after my name but i know enough when to say when and let somebody else know to yeah. do that you know um but we're talking about that before going moving ahead at all for sure yeah so, they had the first um tim they had done the first um well when we did that first um cmom where they ran the cameras through everything mm -hmm. that one section from the top of the hill down to the plant was in really bad shape like big holes in the right. pipe and stuff and so we did what was emergency right away and we still had really tough stuff going down but they were willing to kind of tackle one section of right. it so they did that and then we had this other section that still needed to get done so. mm -hmm. all right plus yeah. plus they lined they lined from the dining common because that's about where that beginning of that line comes the main um comes down um towards the cemetery and then it cuts across uh um the Barton. president's the president's field or whatever you want to call it cuts across yeah. there by the generator and then it heads down the hill from there down to the track so yeah. they made it as far as the track yeah um but from the track to the plant still need that's 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 in discussion right now um yep. and, and i just forwarded the information to um to them so that way they're they can start thinking about it and talk to their trustees and see which direction they need to go in okay. you know um a lot of the pricing is is still kind of up in the air for the simple fact is, is we all know that you know availability of of people and and the supplies is so volatile we don't know you know, is it going to be really expensive now? You know, if you wait another six months, it's going to be a little better. You know, 
it's not really huge, but you know, you, you, you can have a little bit of time with the students there, but I mean, if they're full blown, you, you can't shut down that line because that's, right. that's their main feed to the plant. So, you know, but you don't want to stretch this out to two years now, you know, it's just so many things that really need to come into play. That's why I'd like to see if, if people can start thinking about looking at an, um, the, op the, or the other option of being able to go out around a little bit, just, yeah. just a thought. Okay. So, Thanks, Kevin. Um, all right. So moving on. Um, any select board reports or announcements? Oh, to well, I just um, board of health stuff. I, I alluded to it earlier about the webinar that I was on today on hazardous situations. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that they noted was there at, because of the 2017 hurricane year, 2019. I don't know how Homeland Security did this, but they said that the United States was at its probably highest level of preparedness. But um, by 2021, it was one of the lowest in the last recent couple decades. And the reason, since 9-11 actually, and, and the reason why they felt is, you know, the whole country was 100% affected by the pandemic and the focus was on that, mm -hmm. and that we need to refocus on um, yeah. natural disasters again, which as a town, we made that decision are, already in the summer, mm -hmm. and we are doing training and all that kind of stuff. But what was really interesting is hazardous mitigation money has been in the past only like $25, $50 million a year kind of thing. The last two years, uh, it went up to 200 million and then 500 million. But this past year, it was two and a half billion, and they are considering um, that level going forward because they want us to be more resilient and build more climate change resilient stuff. And so, spend the money. The, well, what I'm saying is the pot is going to be so much, so much bigger, and we got all this so many projects, so many projects that fit the bill, and that. We, we really need to get organized on how we're gonna, you know, just how we're doing the CCI, how we're focusing in on the campus. How do we get money for senior center? Um, you know, the 1888 building, the church, mm -hmm. all this stuff, we're out hustling money. We gotta hustle, organize our projects so we can take advantage of this money because we fit the bill. We yep. have all the background work. We've done work for years and we have documentation. So we've got to figure out what we're going to do so i just wanted to bring this up because this this is going to fit in with kevin's operation and we have bundled notice of intent for maintaining our culverts now so if something blows out we we have the ability we should have the ability to get some money to do this and i i just want us somehow to figure out what we're mm -hmm. again we got to organize so that we don't miss these opportunities because yep. we we as a town can't afford to um you know we take on the climate change impacts of co right. the costs yeah. and i one of the things we should be looking at is a new pavement plan because the pavement plan that kevin has that he's been working on which is gives the priorities you know everybody's in a list it, it's not incorrect in the in the listing of the roads, but it's incorrect in its analysis mm. now because of climate change, our pavement is no longer lasting 15 or 20 years. It's breaking up because of the freeze warm cycle mm. of our winters. So we've we've got to figure out what we're going to do for pavement. Mm -hmm. um, and that's and that's a huge amount of money that we spend. We spend all our chapter 90 money on that every year. So. Yep. I just, it's it's in the back of our mind. We got to think about it. It's just one more thing, but we we have somehow have to have guidance on this. So okay. I'll get off my soapbox. Thank I'm you. Sorry. It's all right. I nope, know. Just trying to roll so night. long. Anything but, you got, Tim, or you, you, Trevor? Do we want to deal with these minutes? We do. We do. Um, I, I just, just the announcements real quickly was just to hit on um, the 350th Jubilee is on New Year's Eve. Please get your tickets. Please yes. come and celebrate with the town. Um, it's gonna We're going to have a tree lighting ceremony too on um, on January first. January first. Okay. Yep. 
Great. at 4 30 we'll have it'll, it's not a big public event but we want people to know that the cake will be lit up January 1st. Very nice. And we want to thank the Galinskis for transporting the cake. Oh, you know, huge help. To get the cake up here. They donated a flatbed. You know, Fred, Becca, with all kinds of volunteers, including Tim, have been working to get this set up. And we, it's just really wonderful. There but, will be no cake cutting. But right. We are lighting it. That's we all. will light it. And, the, and there are tickets available, Stan Adams, you can call Stan Adams, and I think his number is 665-4858, but I'm not 100% sure. It's in our minutes. From yes, we'll week. find it. Yeah. People will find it. Okay. Um, let's John. see. So um, I just hit on Board of Health real quick was just, um, you know, again, get, get flu vaccination, get your boosters. Um, hospitals are filling up with, you know, all three trifecta. You got covid you know, you've got the flu and you got RSV. So it's really good. Um, uh, on the DPH call on Tuesday that I was on, the flu shot is turning out to be an excellent match for yep. what's circulating this year. So please, please get your flu shot because it's, yep. it's really affecting people. And um, item not anticipated, this letter um, is written up. It's just, I didn't know if we, if you guys supported this, we could... Um, Get this on our webpage. You could put it on uh, Deerfield now. And what is it? It's um, in the mailbox, but it, it's a, just a cautionary oh, for the okay. holidays kind of thing. What, you know? All right, let me read that in a second. Yeah. Um, good. Uh, let's see. So, minutes. You wanted to hit on minutes. We've got, oh, I'll make a motion because some of these I know that um, Tim was not here for, so we'll probably abstain. I, well, I oh, can do you do have them. You want to go? January 10th, 2020, uh, I'll make a motion to approve. Okay, I did read them all and I feel good about all of them. I didn't have an I, issue I, with anything. I didn't um, notice anything. Can't so I'll second the motion for January. January 10th, 2020. 2020. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey abstain. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you. The 15th, I will make a motion to approve. Do we have a second? And I'll second it. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey abstain. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S. I. January 29th. January 29th. Can I make a motion, motion to approve. And I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey abstain. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S. I. Next set. Is July 29th. Can make a motion to approve. And uh, have a second. What? Which date? July, July 29th. 29th. And that is 2020. 2020. We have a second. I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey abstain. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. Um, the next one is August 12th, 2020. August 12th, 2020. Do we have a second? I'll second it. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey abstain. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Um, I make a motion for October 12th, 2022. I'll second it. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And then, uh, is that it? Yeah, yep. that was it. I shouldn't say it just like that because I can't thank you enough. Whoever's, Chris, are you doing thank, these? Yes, yeah. thank you. Super helpful. Whoever's tackling these things, it's looking awesome to get caught up. I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. So thank Full you. Full credit to Alex Hershenretter. He's been oh, great. incredible you, with these minutes. Yeah, that's it's super helpful. Very grateful. Um, so let's see. We've got um, discussion items. So we have ad hoc human rights committee. Uh, these are all placeholders. Appointments for the ad hoc committee. Um, appointment for Jason Curtis to the energy committee. I mean, I I feel like we could do Jason Curtis to the okay. energy committee, but I. Remember? I I'm oh, sorry to interrupt. I need to tell you guys something. Yeah, go um, ahead. So I look back in the bylaws, and the Energy Resources Committee isn't created in the bylaws, but an Energy Conservation Committee is, and it has a nine-member appointment uh, group. I don't know if we consider them to be the same thing or not, but I wanted to warn you. Um, just in case anybody questions it not that you would appoint not appoint jason they have eight right. members right now but okay. we may have to deal with this yeah. on a bylaw level at some point okay yeah it sounds like sometimes things move along and then drift around and 
library trustees is common, you know, example, but um, in any other kind of thing that we do. Um, so yeah, so that sounds good. We'll we'll re revisit that bylaw and make sure everybody's on board and revote. We need to revote. But um, I would entertain a motion to appoint Chris Curtis to the energy. No, committee. Jason. Oh, excuse me, Jason Curtis. Yeah, I'll make that motion. Chris is on my mind here. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Um, any further discussion? No. Okay. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And thank you, Jason. Yes, thank you for your service. We really appreciate that. Um, and then we'll, are we going to hold on the human rights until we yes. read, the, read the letters and stuff and take some time? Okay, good. Telecommuting policy. We well, have... we should make an announcement that we still want people to. Oh, yes, please, please do. Yes, yeah. so we have seen um, some letters come in. We've and... got nine, eight or nine. Oh, have, okay, great. Um, yeah, Casey or, and Chris included it in our packet. Okay, perfect. Yep, yeah. I'll go through and read those. Um, uh, so, yes, please. I, I know somebody had reached out to me during the voting, the election, and I can't recall who it was, but they did say that they wanted to be a part of it. I don't recognize the name here, but if anybody is listening and remembers speaking to me about that and is still interested in serving, please let me know and uh, or let Chris know and come on in and, and send in a letter uh, of um, interest. Um, telecommuting policy, we had a first read on that. Are you at a place where we're good to go? I know some of the stuff still has weight, um, Worcester in it, but those are kind of examples, correct? Yes, so we are in a place to accept the telecommuting policy, and then I would let Alex Castro know that we need to convert the Worcester documents. Okay. Uh, we can always change them later, but yep. they're a good they're a good basis to be clear with people. Yep. Anybody have any issues moving forward, or do you want to take more time with that? I'm, I'm fine policy. with it. I, I, I mean, I'm, I think what we should do is just vote the policy and then if there's any issues that come up we we'll can just amend adjust it. it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean if we try to sit here and I'll entertain a motion to approve okay. the telecommuting policy. And I will make that motion. I'll second it. Any further discussion at the moment? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey aye. Trevor McDaniel aye. Caroline S aye. And I want to thank Casey for working on this. I know you've done a lot on this moving things around and adjusting and making sure it's right and just Talking working on it and trying to make sure it's as yeah. as as close to what we need as yeah. we can do now. It may change later. Yeah, let us know what you need when you need it. Um, Thank you. We've got um, some licenses to approve tonight, and I think we did. Uh, let me just get through this here real quick. So we did the. Um, these are oh common vehicular. Uh, you did the liquor licenses. The common victuallers are associated with the liquor licenses. Yes, thank you. <laughs> so and so sense. the only thing Pat mentioned, I don't know if you can see her post-it note. She yep. would like the board to authorize her to use the signature stamp on those. Oh, okay. Yeah, that'll be a blanket motion uh, to use the rubber stamp on these. Is that okay? Okay, yeah, great. That's fine. So um, I'll make a motion to approve the common, is it victualler? Victualler. Victular, victular um, license uh, renewals. Um, and I'm, I'm going to read these 10 and then we'll approve and then we'll go to the other like we did before. Okay. So Berkshire Brewing Company, Deerfield Inn, Food for Strength slash Leo's Table, Giovanni's Fig, uh, Giovanni Fig's Restaurant, LLC, uh, Hotel Warren, Magic Wings, Inc., PHB Yankee, LLC, Powder Hollow Brewery, The Walk, Three, I guess it's called uh, Treehouse Brewing Company and Wolfie's Restaurant. I make a motion to approve these. No second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. We have the class um, class two dealers, um, car dealer licenses uh, renewals. We have uh, Richard Richard Bado uh, Badoga Richards Automotive at 242 Greenfield Road, South Deerfield, Mass. Greg Gardner, GMG Enterprises, 239A Greenfield Road, South Deerfield, Mass. Kevin uh, Borbu, Borbo, maybe, uh, K-Dog Auto Sales, 941 River Road, Deerfield, Mass. Gary and Scott uh, Kolakowski, Deerfield Motors and Equipment, 373 Greenfield Road, Deerfield, Mass. Joseph Kostick, Jr., uh, Country Roads, uh, 18 Upper Road, Deerfield, Mass, 01342. I just had a, one question about um, K Dog. Yeah. Um, was that permitted for 
uh, a location over near like the line at Greenfield on River Road. Is yes, that, that, I believe so. Yeah. It was just because he, he, he turned moved on it. River Road. Just yeah, he moved okay. it there. Yep. 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 And um so okay. I make a motion to approve these as read. All right. And a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchy, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S. I. Great. We have a class three dealer's license. James uh, Byrne Jr., East Deerfield um, Auto Wrecking, uh, 769 River Road, Deerfield. I'll make a motion to approve that. I'll second. All those in favor? Tim Hilchy, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S. I. And then we have funeral directors, um, Harold Risley, Risley's Funeral Home, 90A Sugarloaf Street, South Deerfield, Mass. And Lawrence Risley, Risley's Funeral Home, 90A Sugarloaf Street, South Deerfield, Mass. I will make a motion to approve um, the funeral directors. And I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchy, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. We have a home business renewal. Um, uh, we have Lisa uh, uh, Berger. Deerfield Healing Arts is 194 North Main Street, South Deerfield. Richard Floyd slash uh, by the book, 63 Grave Street, South Deerfield, Mass. Peter R. James, Peter R. James Consulting and uh, Catherine J. James Consulting, 40 Captain Lathrop Drive, South Deerfield. Hel uh, Elaine Mont, Deerfield Therapeutic Massage, 31 Lee Road, South Deerfield, Mass. And Robin Lafleur, Salon 6868. Lee Road, South Deerfield, Mass. Um, make a motion to approve the home businesses. And I'll second. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you. We have an entertainment license. Uh, Betsy Shea, the Hotel Warren, 13 Elm Street, South Deerfield, Mass. Robert uh, Pat uh, Patrizzi, the Tavern uh, Sports Bar, LLC, 2C Elm Street, South Deerfield, Mass. Plus one jukebox and two tables. So I guess that's included in that entertainment license. Um, Damien Lee uh, Goudreau, uh, which is Treehouse Brewing Company, One Community Place, South Deerfield, Mass. Uh, ben Ware, the Yankee Candle Company, Inc., 25 Greenfield Road, South Deerfield, Mass. I make a motion to approve these entertainment licenses. And I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you. The annual resident auctioneer, uh, Douglas Billadu, Douglas Auctioneers, LLC, 241 Greenfield Road, South Deerfield, Mass. Um, I will make a motion to approve um, Douglas Auctioneers. All right. Any further no, discussion? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hill, GI. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn Ness, I. Great. Thank you. An annual non-resident auctioneer, um, uh, Michael uh, Bujerwitz. Junior, Catamount Auction Company, LLC, 42 Church Street, South uh, Shelburne Falls, Mass. And Paul Muller-Reed, New England Auctioneer, 220 Greenfield Road, South Deerfield, Mass. Um, how come that's not a... Yeah, how come that's not a... That's a not, maybe he just doesn't do th stuff in town, but he oh, is... Could be. It's the same... They um, live in another town, but they do hold auctions here. They hold auctions oh, oh, here. Oh, Got oh, it. Okay. okay. I understand. Yeah. Um, Sounds fine. Okay, so I make a motion to approve this. And I'll second. All those in favor? Tim Hill, GI. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn S. I. I, I guess I under, misunderstood the resident. Yeah, non-resident. Yeah. yeah, it's oh. resident versus non-resident. Um, oh, he's got, they both use spaces that they hold auctions. Great. Thank okay. you. So thank much. you. I want to thank Pat and Chris too, because they really pulled all that stuff together without a lot of time, um, yep. in the midst of a lot of other work. We also have, um, we also have the, uh, signing of the sewer commitment. Let me just see this. So, um, and these are all of the abatements. So I'll do the sewer commitment first and we get to the abatement. Um, and then this is the oh, age friendly. So uh, treasurer collector, this is uh, 12, 13, 2022 utility billing, 2023 commitment one, you are hereby authorized to collect from the 965 bills named on the commitment with the amount set against their respective names amounting in the aggregate of $953,393.56 um, 
to uh, pay over all monies as soon as collected to the town treasurer and to make a report of such payment to the town accountant. So uh, commitment number one, again, um, 96,500 is the service. Uh, the sewer is 856. Thousand eight hundred ninety three and fifty six cents for a total of nine thousand nine hundred and fifty three thousand three hundred and ninety three dollars and fifty six cents. I the, make a motion to approve the commitment. Okay, and the sewer consumption was forty five million uh, two hundred fifty two thousand nine hundred and seventy nine gallons. Do we have a chart comparing that from year to year? Uh, I don't, but I bet you I have it in my books. I could grab yes, some no, for I you. And I know she has stuff. Yeah, I was yep. just curious. Yep. Um, I didn't know if people were trying to save water and so our commitment. Yeah, we can our gallons find that water, out. Whatever. I mean, it, it would just be interesting to know what yep. the trend is. Yep. We'll definitely look at that for sure. So um, there's a motion and do we need a second? We do need a second. Okay, I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hill, GI. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn, that's I. And then uh, let's see. So this is a list of all the abatements because this was the summer bill and every resident gets a um, an abatement. They use anything above 125% of their previous winter usage um, gets abated this bill. So the total uh, abatement um, is $109,736.82. I have a sure. question before we make a motion. Yep, that's fine. Um, I'm gonna... Can I just move to look at that? Of I course you can. Through this and, um, I just wanted to understand. Yep. Sorry, I'm not speaking into the mic. Um, the amounts of abatements are drastically different. And I'm just wondering if there's some logical explanation. So like um, at the at the low end, we have um, a request for a home on Sugarloaf Street that's abating $26.84. Yeah. And then on the high end, we have um, Crestview yeah. um, that's for $7,337. Mostly it's irrigation. So we don't. Uh, so it's farming. It, it is farming or irrigation. Yes, exactly. Because, um, or, or watering lawns. Mm -hmm. Because generally um, we, we and we know people are going to water the lawn and we know people are going to water their garden. So a lot on the low end, it's usually watering the garden, filling the pool, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, is over and above their winter usage, but when it gets to the irrigation, you know, we that's why we abate that amount. They still it's watering the lawn. Yes, yeah, it's typically it's typically all irrigation. Mm -hmm. So we don't allow people separate meters to allow you know right irrigation. We just so abate everybody. Somebody's either a farmer or they water their lawn a lot. That's correct. Yep, and they water their lawn a lot. And then they pay a lot of money for the water. Yes, they do. Okay. Yep. Sure. Casey has her hand up. Yeah, go ahead, Casey. I was just going to see if, if if you mind if Kevin has anything to say about that. Oh, if he has anything to say, he's more than welcome to hear from him. Kevin, we, we're always glad to hear from you. Are you, you watering your lawn, Kevin? Are you one of the... No, 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 no watering lawn in my house. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when, when you think about it, you know, we're looking at the commitment and then you're looking at what your rebates are having to be because of the abatements. Um, but it's still 125% of what their bill is. So it, it's, it's still 25% more than what their bill would be. You know, I'm, you know, I'm, am I going the wrong direction with this? Are you following? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> you're, you're, you're still, I don't want to use the word, you're still making money, but you're still making money. You're not returning all of the money. Right. Yeah. If that, if that makes sense, you're only, you're only, you're only charging them 125%. Yep. Yeah. 25. You know, and, 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 Anything above and beyond, or you know, yeah, anything below that, you're you're making money on per se. We're still having to pay the water. Most of the water is not going down the pipes. That's correct. Right. That's right. Correct. Yeah, and and that's and that's the whole thought process is is it's not going down the pipes. It's going back right back into the ground. You know, it's recharging. Um, and and we're not having to treat it, and and it's not a cost to the town. 
whether it be a flow issue or or um, contamination issue. So it's mm -hmm. it's it doesn't affect us. Yeah, good. That was just a good opportunity to educate myself. On yeah, for sure. And people listening. How somebody could spend 26 and another one spend, you know, 7,000 yep. something. Oh, yeah. So thank you. Yep, for sure. So uh, December 14, 2022, the select board uh, hereby authorized the abatement of the above sewer accounts for single family owner occupied properties above 125% of their own winter consumption for the FY23 commitment one totaling $109,736.78. So entertain a motion to approve. I will make a motion to approve the abatement. And I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Trevor. Yeah. Can I make a plug for staff in here? They did an amazing job. They Sarah, did. Pat, everybody trying to make sure you got this so we could get it out. Trying to trying to get a vacation too in the middle of tax bills coming in, sewer oh, bills yeah. coming in, stuffing envelopes. Thank you for everybody's help. It's always mayhem this time of the year and sometimes crazier than others. Oh. Um, and we'll all address the um I, I don't think that matters. I don't think it matters. Okay. Let's just, let's just done a backwards thing. This one's right. Oh yeah. Nest okay. Shores. Nest Shores. Yeah, I don't, sounds like I a don't, nice place, Nest Shores. <laughs> I'd like to visit. There. I like the house there. You can always correct it, Carolyn. <laughs> just do a <laughs> no, straight I, through. I just didn't. As long as they know that. No, it's legal. that's fine. It's fine, that's I'm fine. sure. And then I'll look at uh, Frontiers and um, I think Pilots and other and then any you know farmers. We also we had a, that policy last year. We put together for farmers and stuff. So. Are you going to look at pilot too? Charlie? Yes, I am. I'm going to do that. I just hadn't had a chance to get in and look at their numbers yet since they came. Okay, thank you. Town hall also. What's that? Town hall also. Oh yes, town hall also. Yep. Um, is there? Um, let's see. Do Do you want to sign the uh, MOU for the program we just saw? Yeah. I'm fine. Or, okay. I feel pretty good about it too. Is there just one place for you? I guess there's just one. Good. Yep. I, I make a motion to authorize the chair to sign. Okay. I'll second. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. I mean, there's no sense in delaying it. Whether no, it's I think it's a great decision. program. Um, well, Sunderland and lately I, are in school. Yeah. So it makes total sense for us to work together. All over this. I, I know that she'll be excited to work with them on that. Yeah. So those are signed. And I was thinking that. Um, Carolyn can participate as a select board member, a board of health member, a senior citizen. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that last one. Ooh, I was, I was trying to be a low profile at this. Trevor time. and I could dodge that bullet. I, yeah, I, we can for a little longer. I have, I have, um, I, I am interested in the fact that you know, the definition for. Um, you know, the vulnerable population and injustice and, and equity and all that kind of stuff is pretty narrow. Yeah. You know, it's a lot race based, which I, I'm not arguing against. No. But I feel like, you know, in Franklin County, which majority is white, yeah. there are still huge yeah, inequities. Absolutely. Like transportation, we root them out. internet, yep. like, you know, competency and of, mm -hmm. you know, access to the computers and healthcare, mm -hmm. the whole thing. It's true. Yep. So, I mean, I think our definition is too narrow. So I kind yeah. of am willing to argue that. Yep. Uh, I have a great memorandum from Casey Warren, town administrator, for recommendation for hire assistant town clerk. Oh, you know what? Can we just, you skipped the Tilton Library ownership thing? Oh, uh, can I do this again. first? Uh, well, yeah. I, I just, I just want us to. <laughs> yeah, you know, I will forget it. All right. Go I, ahead. I just want, I just want us to to, um, I don't know, have Casey encourage the Tilton Library to look at, to address the ownership. Yes, we do. And, and we, we've had that letter from the attorney years ago. I think Wendy went out and got that letter and information. I know. And, and, they just, and I know they've been asking us to get involved with it, but we really laid out the steps of what yeah, they need to they, do. And it's and their they, lawyer that they needs need to, to start fix, the process, correct? Am right. I? Right about yes, that. you're right. And we've talked to I've talked to Lisa four times. And okay. um, I think it one of the things that the trustees need to do is they need to instruct their lawyer to get in touch with Lisa. 
Right. I think yes. That I think that's the best case because us. Right, but I answering it about doesn't really help. I, I think it really is their lawyer just, and I'm, we're willing to offer Lisa to talk this through. And I'm well, sure the lawyer has. Sure, Char Charlene that. Polinsky had a point that it needs to be squared away. Yeah, and then um, and Lily, Lily at our senior housing meeting mentioned that my husband's name is on the deed for what? from a trust the, at the library. Oh, he's one of the he's. Yeah, um, was indeed at the time. Yeah, and I'm not so because sure. Like none of that really did. matters, right? No, it doesn't. But what I happens guess if is, we want to take it over, it's one thing, but it really isn't. I mean, the issue everybody tried to make. Well, it. Ray Bourne is dead. I mean, you know. Yeah. Apparently, what they were doing is every once in a while, whoever was a trustee ended up being on the deed. Right. And then for some reason, they stopped updating it. So it's. Stagnant. Old, it's stagnant old trustees and they need to organize their trustees off the board or whatever mm -hmm. different from their friends and i i i totally respect the opinion um i'm, I'm not a lawyer and a, mm -hmm. i'm sure that the trust ownership it's clear in the language that this was a gift to the town right so the town when you get a gift somebody else doesn't own it mm -hmm. um, and the trustees are there to administer the library for the benefit of the town yeah. has been gifted to it. But if there were a way to do Put something in the, in the trust or alter the trust or let the trustees, you know, sell the library to the town that we already own for a dollar just to right. stop this discussion from ever happening. Yeah, that's and, fine. But that's if, fine. if Lisa says it's not legally possible to do this, then... So be it. Yeah. yeah. Um, At least we but, have an answer. And... Yeah. Okay. But I do um, agree that... Um, the library trustees lawyer should work directly with Lisa just to do all the steps and that Lisa should work with them or designate yeah. somebody in her firm to work with them so that they can agree together that all these steps have taken place. So, you know, and now that we're all cooperating together again. Uh, and their um, and their number of trustees and right. when they're appointed all needs to get sorted out too. So there's a lot of work to this. That there may be questions great. about the trust too. I haven't read the opinion in a while. So I will good. let Lisa know that this conversation happened. Sounds good. All right. Thank, thank you. you. All right. I'm gonna, no, it's fine. I'm going to get to the good news. Subsequent to advertising, a staff a team, including me, the town accountant, assistant treasurer, collector, and assistant town administrator, received and reviewed several candidate applications for position of assistant town clerk. This is an exempt full-time benefited position working in the treasurer, collector, and town clerk departments. After interviewing five individuals on behalf of the group, we present Casey, is Cassie. it Cassie? Cassie. Cassie Sandrell um, as the successful finalist for the assistant town clerk position. Cassie Sandrell brings key experience and skills from public and private sector employment. Cassie currently works in Northampton Senior in the Northampton Senior Center and Craig's Doors, both of which uh, serve a diverse population presenting unique opportunities to support senior service and shelter service delivery, significant communication skills, troubleshooting, sensitive situations, and experience navigating staff shortages make her an excellent candidate to meet our needs. It is our recommendation that the select board vote to hire um, Cassie Sandrell as assistant town clerk and authorize the town administrator to finalize the hiring process. Thank you very much for your consideration. I will make that motion. No second. Any further discussion? Just thrilled that we finally have somebody. Yep. Thank you for your work. I really appreciate everybody's work on this. And, and it was a good, good team effort. And will she, if she's in the, will she, is she in the, ex, the chart of scales? I mean, yes. Um, yeah, so the position, I'm sorry, I made one mistake in the memo. It's actually a non-exempt position. Oh, I, I'm the sorry. last one I used, um, I, I sort of recribbed uh -huh. another memo. So I'm sorry for that mistake, but yes, Tim, the assistant then, town clerk is in the class comp plan. Okay. okay. And then, and she's coming in at a, at, at which level? I mean, is she, I is would, that? so we discussed this. Um, You're gonna our suggestion as a group is to bring her in at step two. Okay. Because she does have municipal experience. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Can you let us know what happens there. I okay. will. Do you want to add anything, Chris? Chris did a lot of work with me on Thank this you, and the team itself was very active. Thank you. Um, 
Yeah, all I want to add is that we're really excited about the prospect of this candidate. She really impressed us during the interview process, and um, I think you'll enjoy working with her as well. That's great. That's Excellent. really great. We're getting good people. <laughs> Thank yeah, you so much. Exciting. Okay, did we do an all all those in favor? I think we did. Um, but do it, it, let's again. do it again. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. <laughs> Trevor McDaniel, aye. Cool enough, sorry. Great. I, I don't know what I'm doing either, but let's do it twice because we're we'll happy. memory. Yeah, oh, it's oh, so talking about it. I'm just making uh -huh. sure we're not skipping anything. Oh my God. Let's see. All right. That's so good. our next upcoming meetings are just, oh, we said December 28th, but we were going to kind of skip that, right? Unless there was something. Yes. Serious. Unless there was something critical, you canceled it and I didn't catch it. I've right. been in and out because I've been sick. It's um, not a case. But so hey, yeah. It's, fine. it's yep. fine in case we need it. It's yep. fine. But, but otherwise uh, we're not going to. Yeah. And um, town administrators report or updates, do you want to hit on anything? I know. Yes, I have five things. I'll be quick. Okay. Um, I'm, we've been, Kevin, myself, Chris Nolan, we've been working with Rivermore on the EV chargers at the Larry lot. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you guys some information about potential costs the town is going to face. Uh, but we actually have a meeting to go over the application process, Chris and I, tomorrow. Um, Kevin, you're welcome to come if you want to. Um, it's really the two things we're looking at are an approximate cost to the town of about $28,000 for the Leary lot and 25,000 for the town hall. Um, so we're going to go over that tomorrow. Landfill solar. So next amp is concerned about being able to proceed. I, using. I just, um, Hang on. Hey, I, I went to that electric charging station webinar last week. And um, if you're a mile within an interstate, it's supposed to be free. We're outside of a mile. We're outside of a mile, yeah. It's, it's a travel, it's, it's a traveled mile, not oh. a, as the bird flies, we are just outside by like oh, two okay. tenths of a mile. Oh my God. Yeah. Can, we move, can we move the center of town? Sure. So yeah, that would be kind of interesting because we could maybe bury the lines. <laughs> I thought we were fine. I was mm. feeling sad for Which, all the hill towns and everybody else, and now we're so we got no. Hurt. But well, yes and no. I mean, basically, we're trying to. I mean, we're still close enough that I mean, we we may not be able to get all the funding that we could have for it. But one of the advantages that we're looking at is is going with the stage three charging systems. So that way we can bring in people off of 91 for a quick charge. They can go into Leo's table. They can go to Cheslick's. They can they can go get their hair cut. You know they can go to Johnny just Fick. just 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 try to bring somebody into town to try and increase what we have a little bit. And that and that's a thought process. And you know out of a lot of the things that I think that we that we class collectively as a town we we put money towards. I I think you know it. I'm not an electric vehicle kind of guy, but I'm looking at the future and, and this it's, it's going to be needed in the future. Yes. Um, and if we have the opportunity to go ahead and, and get the infrastructure for it, I think we should move forward with it. Okay. Um, you know, that's, that's again, my own personal opinion. Internet is, is 91. The only thing that qualifies is within right now. It, it, right now it is Tim. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Five and 10 is not considered enough of a traffic flow mm -hmm. to no. uh, that's my understanding. Um, but yeah. you know, there's, there's nothing saying that we can't, we can't twist on DOT or whoever's the one that's setting, setting the regulations on this. I mean, I mean, to be so close. Well, it's federal right know. now, Kevin, the reason well, then I, um, talk to your federal friends, we'll get it through. Well, I mean, we could get a waiver if you're talking of a tenth of a mile or something. Yeah, exactly. That's, why not? Why not? I, I mean, I'm burnt. I mean, I was feeling but sad for other towns. Fifty grand is not a huge well, deal. I mean, we can ask the question. The most they can do is say no. A long term, it's not, but it's still we got to come up with fifty grand. Yeah, and that was supposed to be free. And for a tenth of a mile, I well, think we it was two tenths, right, Kevin? Two tenths. Yeah, about it's, it's about two tenths of a mile. Anyone? You know, I, I I have not physically driven it, but we we GPSed it. You know, and, and did the cursors going across, and we were about two tenths. So there's not much that's with. I mean, once you get off a highway, that I mean, I don't know. I guess right. Lots to park and ride, that kind of thing. But still, if you want to get business downtown, like, where else what if you which is what we'd like to do. We'd like to support our support our local business. Oh, 
and then yeah we can open up Conway on. Street again uh, <laughs> sorry all right moving on next amp I can't believe that um yeah next amp is concerned about being able to utilize the deed that's in place for the landfill um okay. and I actually I I kept trying to get them to explain it to me and finally I said something to Beth and Beth Greenblatt and Lisa and Lisa um, is going to confer with Nexamp's council because okay. there's legalese involved, but it shouldn't be an issue. Um, right. The South Deerfield Congregational Church, um, I've been working, we receive specs for materials removal, but we also, uh, or materials abatement, but we also, uh, Julie put together a draft scope for the analysis of the building. So we are, she and I and some other staff are working on finalizing a request for quotes. And we think that should be able to go out in the next few days with a due date of January 19th and a walkthrough date of January 5th. Okay. Then the budget schedule, Julie, Brenda, and I have been working on a budget schedule. Um, it's difficult to get everybody at meetings. So it's not finalized and it probably is gonna need a little more discussion but we'll keep you posted. Um, and also Brenda's working on the budget sheets so we can get them out next week. Um, the due date on budget sheets, just so you wanna know, Kevin, I think I told you this, but the due date on budget sheets is gonna be the week of the 23rd, I think, of January. Yeah. Um, the other day on that too. Yeah, because part of it is the governor's budget isn't coming out until right. March. I know. And so it's kind of be, it's gonna be difficult with the schools. So both Brenda and Julie are concerned about that. Um, we are still pursuing several grants. Alice and Denise had a debrief session with Community One Stop to discuss the application and why it wasn't approved. Um, a new letter of interest is open. I haven't had a conversation with them because I wasn't able to go to that meeting on Monday. Um, but I do believe we're going to have circle back around to that. And then there are, I applied for two community compact grants, one for our personnel policy manual development and one to assess current and future staffing needs with the added elements of diversity, equity, and inclusion. So we can position the town to be an employer of choice. I have not heard back, um, but I did, I had run this by staff at ANF earlier in the year as we were trying to get some sort of scope for both of those together. Okay, thank you. That was a lightning round, love it. Trying. Appreciate I'm it. I'm fading right. fast. I apologize for, I didn't realize my mic wasn't muted earlier. <laughs> I am fading fast tonight. <laughs> didn't notice. Okay. Anything else before the board? No? Uh, well, just one, I want to oh. revisit something. And Please. I, I, I want to acknowledge that I, I agree with Julie that having an alternate plan would give us something to look at. And so I, I don't know that this is a good idea and I'd like Lisa to weigh in, but if if the nonprofits were, if we could do it and the nonprofits were willing to pay for it, we could approach a, a totally different engineering firm and ask them to design it, uh, to come up with an alternate design, but they would be working for us. Mm -hmm. I mean, if if it's really true that, you know, an engineering firm can come up with a hugely less expensive way to do this that, you know, maintains the current conditions, I'm fine with looking at it, but just a thought. I don't. I don't want to make a decision. No, no. no okay. But this Sounds is like good. this would be like a peer review. Just it's no different than anything else that we don't have expertise on that we would right. just yeah. do a peer review. Yeah, I mean that could be a that could be an alternative that yeah you know would be valuable. I'd really love just the conversation to say why can't you guys get in a room now? Yeah. That's yeah. Well, it, I want it does. Happen. You know. Anyway, all right. Thank you. Um, we we should figure out, you know, what we want to do in the yeah. next two weeks or so. Okay. And, and at least. Anyway, that's it. All right. Well, thank Thanks. you all. It's not an easy meeting, I know, but um, we try to listen to everybody and do the right thing. And it's not. I know it's not. No, somebody is no, not always pleased, but I think we try to be fair and. We'll yeah. keep an open mind to anything in the future. So yeah. um, any further discussion? I will make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. All right. Um, all those in favor? Tim Milchie, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. 
Happy holidays, everyone. Yeah, happy Please holidays. Be safe. Get your tickets. <laughs>